Um, so welcome everyone. I love having you here. I'm really excited for today's program. Um, and and you know, just, you know, just oops, something there's an echo. Okay, there's gone. Um, there's a um, kind of nostalgia happening, I think, for a lot of people about you know meeting. We're meeting online, but we really want to be meeting in person and seeing each other. Mm -hmm. So just to you know have have you feel a little bit more in person, I made myself dress up today, put the blazer <laughs> on that I haven't uh, worn actually out of the house because I bought it in like March of last year. And we're going to go ahead and look at our wonderful old slides that we haven't always been using in these meetings. But the reminder that we're here to improve our practice and business success um, for all of us, all us consultants, solopreneurs, freelancers, um, through relationship building and programs. And that's what we're about today. So um, we have a great program. Shelly Golden is going to welcome us and have us connect a little bit in creating connections. And um, then we'll have Judy Baker doing a life hack on Canva, I believe. Yep. And our main program, which is Tasha Nesbitt. Oops, I forgot to change the title. It is not decision seven. <laughs> so I mean, we'll it could kind of it move could be along. decisions hey, that matter to your film. <laughs> to your film. Sorry about that. That's also part of the bacon, you know, nostalgia mistakes had happened. Oh, great. So we have our main speaker coming up, uh, Tasha Nesbitt. She has been a video producer and digital content expert in the Bay Area for the past 13 years. So we have an expert here. Um, and through her, through her video production company, Tasha.media, she has produced tons of video content for corporate, for small business, and for nonprofit clients. Now, since COVID, Tasha has signed on to help launch the world's first A1-driven in-video search technology with the video commerce startup Viral.com. So that is actually something that sounds really in interesting. It's not a, just a corporate gig, it's, it's new. Um, <laughs> Tasha is a Bay Area native who grew up in Vallejo. She was born into what she calls a hippie parents who came out west to raise chickens, keep bees, and grow mushrooms. What kind of mushrooms, Tasha? <laughs> All right. I will never tell. Take it away. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, and just a little small correction. It's artificial intelligence. It's AI driven in video search. It's the first of its kind on the market. And what it does is it takes a video and it listens and watches millions of videos at one time and it pulls out and extracts information like demographics, uh, brand safety, if, there's, if there are minors in the video, uh, if there are risky things happening in the video, if uh, there is violence in the video, it has an audio transcription uh, intelligence spotting mechanism. So anyway, this is a very new technology and, uh, and I'm excited to work with Viral on this and I can answer any questions about that later. But today we're gonna focus on making videos. Now I can see that many of you are very savvy uh, with Zoom already. Uh, as Judy mentioned, Canva is gonna be doing video now. Um, you can record your videos with Zoom. You can record with Camtasia. You can record with your phone. You can record with a DSLR. Just any professional DSLR these days is recording, can record in 4K. So that's a high, nice high resolution. So I'm going to try to touch on a lot of different subjects today as I move through this presentation so that I can support each of you in some way. Please save all of your questions or put them in the chat and I'll answer them to the best of my ability at the end of the presentation. Um, and uh, here we go. I'll just start. So let me share my screen. All right. Can everyone see 
my screen and put it in the chat, yes or no. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, great. Okay, so we have now been transitioning into this desktop software uh, ability to be shooting your own videos, uh, just pressing record with a single click. So I'm not gonna talk about all of those things, but instead we're just gonna talk a little bit about videos and why they're so important to business at this moment. Um, and I hate to hit you with a bunch of stats at the beginning of the presentation, but this is, I wanna impress upon you how important it is that videos offer something special uh, for any business, big or small. And now with Zoom and Canva, you can be recording your own videos and sharing them with your community videos enhance your community, they, they bring your community together, they get to know about you, your personality, your energy, and it puts you front and center one-on-one. -on -one. And as we've heard earlier, when we're talking about Zoom fatigue, it's a very intimate experience. It's a one-on-one -on -one, eyes to eyes, video into eyes into the camera. I'm talking straight to you. It's really important. And think about yourselves. Do you look at videos in order when you're making a decision to purchase something? I do, I, all the time I'm looking. Um, Amazon has videos embedded in their pages uh, for reviews. And when I'm looking to purchase something, I look at a lot of those pictures and videos and it helps, it helps me make a decision. Um, so I'm not gonna read all of these stats, but they're really important videos have a definite impact on people making decisions on whether they want to purchase from you or work with you. I think also I should mention that during COVID, video production and <laughs> video consumption has skyrocketed. You know, we're at home we're not really allowed to go, at least at first, for the first eight months, go outside and go shopping as we used to do. So videos have skyrocketed on the internet. People are making more and they're becoming more integrated into our daily lives. One of the biggest things for commerce is that video can help with touch-free shopping experiences. Um, and but what I mean by that is instead of being in a store and someone is supporting you there, um, a video can help, a video on a product page can, or your offer page can really help to uh, convince someone else that this is worth doing or worth spending the money on. So one of my favorite things about video is the many ways that we can integrate video into the business there are many different businesses in this virtual room. And I can <clears throat> say that each of these examples here are something that you can integrate into your business to support your clients right now. One, directions. Do you have a hard to locate place where you, your GPS takes someone to the, down the street rather than your front door? A little video showing from the main street how to get to your front door, your business door, is a very simple way to use video to assist someone trying to get to you to work with you. Q&A on your website or on YouTube or on your blog. Answer questions that you hear over and over and over again. As business owners, people are always answering or asking a set of the same questions. You can answer those in person and also you can preempt answering them in person by sending a video either by email or you can share a link. In case you're wondering about this, here's the answer to this. You can address objections. You can educate your audience. You can build a body of work to educate your audience on your blog product demos. I'm not sure how many people have products. I know this is mostly a service-based group, but 
sometimes there's a little hand holding that needs to happen. And you can show someone a process, a very specific process to doing something, especially when you can't be there on person or you can't actually uh, uh, show them in person. Testimonials. Testimonials are one of the biggest credibility, credibility building videos that anyone can have. And it's one of the videos that I say every business owner should have on their website or on their social media presence. Testimonials are amazing. We wanna see people like us experiencing a transformation from your product or service. And then we want that too. And that's also one of the reasons why video helps uh, so much with people making decisions, buyer decisions. Onboarding. Onboarding is really great for customizing your client's experience when you first start working with them. Um, it's similar to Q&A, you're, you're setting expectations, you're addressing uh, the needs immediately of your clients, and um, it's unexpected uh, sometimes, uh, but more and more people are using the videos and landing pages in order to share and onboard them and welcome them into their business. My personal favorite, <laughs> special messages, birthday videos. Um, what, how sweet is it to open your email one day on your birthday and get a special birthday message from someone you have been working with that you would never imagine would remember your birthday. Um, I think it's an extra special touch and it means a lot. Uh, to people, even though it's often overlooked sending a birthday card or, you know, how many of us get birthday cards in the mail anymore. <laughs> uh, so email, uh, create a video and then email a link to that video to share or include it in the video. I can talk about that later, how to do that. Um, holiday videos, personal invitations, thank yous. These are all great ideas um, and, and very uh, easy to do and very um, sometimes unexpected ways that, that you can enhance your business uh, and, and keep your business coming back because you're putting that extra special touch um, in, your, in your business. So, if you have any questions about these, uh, you can put them in the chat and I'll talk about them a little later. And also just let me ask Angela or uh, Janet too. I thought I was gonna be really good at maintaining my time, but uh, I'm gonna ask for some support there to make sure uh, to give me a five minute mark before we go into um, a little breakout session. We got you, Tasha. Okay, thanks so much. So now we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts. This is an overview, but it is a nut, still nuts and bolts. This is how you get ready. First, you write. You write your message. You get ready. And I, I don't wanna go deep into these things because I think writing your message, I think many of you have been, business, been in business for many years and have done this a lot. And I think you're very experienced in this area. So I think you will have no problem. Well, I won't say no problem because it's always. Uh, a little bit of a challenge to write, <laughs> but uh, for even me. Uh, and so, so the first thing you do is you write. Uh, the way that I like to, to, uh, to, to produce is have people write out their whole message in full and then reduce it down to talking points and also to refine everything, including your ending offer. You wanna prep, you wanna assess what you're going to do for recording. Um, most of this presentation is geared toward good old fashioned uh, camera lights and, and things that I've, I've uh, been using in my professional practice. But now that we have Zoom, now that we have Canva, now that we can do Facebook Live, now that we can record on, on even uh, on YouTube, you wanna think about how you are going to, to record. And, um, and you wanna have the right location. Many of you already in this room have amazing locations. 
uh, with that, that look clean and put together in the back. I would not suggest having a, having a surrealist artist painting in your background that draws your attention away <laughs> from your face and your message. Keep it simple, keep it light, and uh, that's always the best way to go. You want to make sure that you have really good sound quality and light quality. Uh, that's really important, especially sound. We need to hear you. We want to see you and we want to hear you. Consider your background, like I just mentioned. Primp. So this is for women and men. Primp. Choose your appropriate attire. Look great. You will know all about this already. Plan for great hair and even, um, even out your face. Now that's something very specific. And I wrote it that way because sometimes lighting makes you, uh, will cast shadows on your face that you don't really want. So you wanna be front lit. So whenever you're doing your video, you wanna make sure that there's ample light coming straight onto your face, not above that casts deep shadows over your eyes and your nose and your chin. And it makes you look downward like this. Your light should be coming at you like this. So you wanna even out your face with light. So practice, I don't need to say any more about that. Always practice your talking points before you deliver. So I know, again, this is that you are all very skilled at crafting your own messaging at this point. Um, so I won't get too deep into this, but one of the important things and the way that I help people uh, to create videos um, when I coach them is you wanna focus on the transformation that you're giving them. So who are you and why do you do what you do? What makes you so excited? What is the problem that people are having that, you, that they're having before they work with you? And then discuss your solution. Then talk a little bit about what happens during the transformation, what happens when people are going through your business, what did your product or service, what do they experience? And then of course, uh, what your solution is, what does it resolve for that person? What, what does it, uh, what, how does it solve the problem? We're all familiar with this uh, formula that we craft very specifically to our own company and our own personal offer. Uh, and of our product and service. And then of course, make your, make your offer. So that's in the writing. And if we were doing a really basic elementary course here, I'd go deeper into this. So I'm gonna move on. I just wanna give you a little bit of a tip about timing. When you're writing, it's really important to think about how long you're gonna, you're gonna make your video. One of the things about videos is that it's easy to ramble on and on and you just don't know, the time goes by so quickly. This is a good rule of thumb for words when you're writing uh, words and how long it typically takes someone to speak those words into the camera. This is based on uh, when people get by vo voiceover artists. This is also how usually you would pay for your words, it's based on words. And I hope that is helpful. So now we're gonna to get to the shoot part. Camera. So we talked about, you're gonna have your camera, you're gonna put some light to even out your face. You wanna make sure you have good sound and you wanna bring your A game, what I call the A frame of mind. And we're gonna go do an exercise a little bit in a little bit about that. Press record, look and connect with your people. This is not intuitive. <laughs> you're not talking to someone, you're talking to a camera, right now I'm talking to a small circle in my computer and many of you are as well. <laughs> but you wanna look deep into that because that is the portal to all of the hearts of the people that you're serving. It's very important to bring that energy into the camera when you're talking and speaking to the camera. Deliver your message. Now it's not always easy. You will mess up and you'll make mistakes. So you wanna repeat. Just keep doing it until you do it over and over again. And it gets easy, it, get, it can be discouraging because I've done it. I've, I've recorded many videos myself and 
I stumble over my words, I make mistakes, I say the wrong thing, I get frustrated, I get angry at myself, I start looking at my eyebrows. There's all kinds of things to distract you. <laughs> the best thing of all is that this is digital video. You can record endlessly over and over till you get it right. This isn't film where you're spending a lot of money on actual film anymore. We're in the digital world. So take your time and do it again. Now, at the end of your shoot, when you're sure that you've got it, you wanna back up your digital media. So of course in Zoom, when you record, when you're done, Zoom does a little like processing thing where it needs to transform the video from a Zoom file into a file that we can actually use. So digital media is a big part of video, recording your own videos and sharing your own media, whether it's even images or memes or anything like that. You want to be as organized as you can. So always back it up. Always save it in two places. I have my Dropbox and I have a hard drive and I also have my computer, a, a, an extra drive and I also have my computer. I'm going to be sharing a, at the end of this meeting, I'm going to be sharing my um, equipment list which has a couple suggestions of, of portable hard drives. A little word about resolution. I get this question a lot, and that's why I have it here. Here are the differences. Standard definition is 720 by 480. That is the framing, that's the resolution. That's how many pixels are inside of the little squares <clears throat> on the digital screen, excuse me. <clears throat> Standard definition videos usually, you can choose, even in Zoom, you can choose the file, the way that the camera is capturing footage. You can choose it to be standard, high definition, or 4K. Most iPhones shoot in 4K now. <clears throat> Zoom does not at this moment that I know of. You can correct me, but it does not shoot in, in 4K. Um, but that's probably coming in the future. <laughs> Most streaming, uh, streaming platforms do not shoot in 4K yet, or do not record in 4K. High definition is 1920 by 1080. This is the most common format, the most common resolution, and it's the industry standard. Um, 4K is higher. It's usually high and higher, 8K. There's up to 60 and 70K for big movies. Um, we don't have to concern ourselves with those. We'll never deal with those. But that's commercial broadcast and those are super large files where high def is medium. This is usually where we all sit. This is what we all get when we uh, shoot and then usually, but it's intentional. You have to make sure that you're getting the highest quality. You can always go down in quality like photography, but you can never go up in quality and still maintain really good quality. So you always wanna just make sure that you're in the high definition space if you can. Um, Unless you're only doing really small things for personal, in which case I would not worry about it and shoot small files and you can email those. There's a lot more to it, but I don't want to get too technical here. Technical here. So let's talk about sharing. You know, you could share nearly anywhere. You can share just person to person. You can share on social media. You can share on your website. We talked earlier about how you can share different ways you can integrate videos into your, into your business. Um, but one of the things that you wanna do after you record your video, you can share it straight, but sometimes you wanna clean, any, clean up some sound or you wanna add a logo, add some music, subtle music at the bottom things like that. Now you can do that in, in certain programs if you want to do it yourself. Uh, but sometimes that's not always an option. Some people just aren't technical and don't want to do it. Uh, and that's okay. That's okay because there's a lot of support out there for us. Um, Camtasia is an amazing tool these days. I use Camtasia for little tiny small projects. Premiere Pro is the industry standard and I use that for my professional projects, but Camtasia is quick and easy and it has a lot of plug and play. Everything's moving toward this super simple drag and drop, you know, cut here, cut there, very simple things, similar to Canva itself actually. But if you don't want to do the editing yourself and you wanna sweeten up your videos at the end, 
Um, here are some guides for you. VDU.com offers editing remotely. You work with them, you hire them. It's pretty affordable. Uh, they're in Romania. <laughs> and you upload your videos, you tell them exactly what you want, you provide the music, and they put it together and send it back to you. Fiverr.com, if you I'm sure you've heard of Fiverr.com, is also a really great place to find video editors. You just wanna make sure that you vet the people that you hire. You reach out to them and ask them questions, and if, they're, if they speak English and do well, it's like asking for Craigslist, but there are actually some really great deals on Fiverr. If you wanna hire a professional video editor, post-production editor for anything, uh, the real directory, which is based up in uh, Northern Sonoma County, I think, Northern California, uh, has a listings of all Northern California professionals. And they will have a directory of professional video, ed video editors uh, that you can choose from. Prepare. I just want to just share quickly a little bit about these two file formats, MP4s and .MOVs. Um, these are the most accepted file formats from YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Vimeo, all of the places uh, that you would usually host a video. And so other file formats are more obscure and these are the ones. So if you're ever saving any of your files and it asks you, do you wanna save your file? Um, and the drop-down list is this long, choose an MP4 or a .mov. Most of the time they'll be saved automatically as one of those two file formats. Then your upload. So this process deserves its own masterclass. <laughs> Uploading to different uh, platforms, your blog, your website, embedding links, all of that is, can be very, um, hard to figure out on your own. And I understand. Uh, different places that host videos have different processes. Um, and, and so if we were gonna go into a deep, a deep dive on that, I would talk to you about the most popular, which would be YouTube, which would be LinkedIn, which would be possibly Facebook and your website. How to embed video on your website, usually you have it on LinkedIn, or sorry, pardon. Usually you have it on YouTube or Vimeo and you use the link to embed it onto your website. That's the easiest way to go. But there are other ways to host your videos on your website as well. So we talked a little bit, I felt like I needed to send, to share this social specifications. A lot of people ask me about these. They're not often updated, they can be, but this is the most recent social specifications. I don't expect you to memorize these and I'm not gonna go in detail with them, but I just wanted to show you a little bit about the differences about these uh, for sharing and building your community. Um, LinkedIn, you can have long videos, but again, always the shorter, the better, the shorter, the sweeter. Rambling and talking can be just detrimental sometimes, unless what you're saying is so compelling that uh, to them that they're going to hang on every word. So LinkedIn can, or Facebook can be up to 45 minutes. You can do, you can do Facebook live videos up to 45 minutes on Facebook. And now it's looking like even longer uh, coming soon. YouTube accepts every, almost every file format of video there is. YouTube is the premier platform for video. Uh, you can upload up to 12 hours of YouTube videos. You can have a channel that's like your blog. You can, you can use YouTube. Now, if you have a Gmail, I'm sure many of you already know this, but if you have G Suite for your business, you already have a YouTube, YouTube account ready and waiting for you that's connected to your Gmail account. All you have to do is go to the little cube in the right-hand corner on your, brow on your Gmail browser and look for YouTube and click on it and open up your YouTube account. We can talk more about that later. If you have questions, just ask me. Instagram, not a lot of people are on Instagram doing, uh, doing blogging kinds of things, but there are a lot of people on Instagram with ads. People run ads on Instagram and Facebook. 
Um, so I'm not gonna spend any more time on this because we don't need to. Now I do wanna talk, I get a lot of questions about editing. How much does editors cost? How do I know if they're good or not? How, how do I know? Well, I'll just be really straightforward <laughs> with you. Um, professional editing is an art and it's a great skill. Uh, professional editors know how to tell stories. They understand rhythm. They understand file formats. They can integrate all kinds of different mixed media. They, ma they <clears throat> master the timeline. They know what to do and they know how to, to um, create high-end professional finished polished pieces. And they can range, their, their day rates range anywhere from $600 to $1,000 for a 10 hour day. Most video production schedules run on a 10 hour day. A junior editor, a junior editor is anywhere from 300 to 550 for a 10 hour day as well. And that person may not be the best storyteller. They may not be uh, the top of the line, cream of the crop for commercial broadcast quality or, or super slick videos, but they're, they do very well. They could be quick and uh, it really depends. You have to ask those kinds of questions. Or sometimes you can just pay the least amount <laughs> to someone who's in film school, who's learning. And if you have patience, you can work with them. Your neighbor's nephew who's in film school always is ready to take on a video project for an amount. So let's see. So that's enough for, that's everything that I have to talk about the video production. Uh, and I do wanna go into an exercise uh, pretty soon here. And this exercise, I'm going to introduce the exercise. Let's see. Let me get my sheet here. I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to get. Uh, so, this exercise is actually, I know that many of you do uh, do your own videos <clears throat> and probably already have some of your own exercises in order to get into the frame of mind of speaking in front of the camera. But this is my personal favorite. This is something that I do. And I do it not only just when I'm doing my own videos, but I do it also when I'm in a tough spot or I'm going into a meeting. But I call it my a, getting into my A frame of mind. So we're going to go into some groups pretty soon here. And we're going to talk a little bit about this. Um, but first, let me just explain it. So in our groups, you're gonna choose one quality or superpower that you possess or that you wish you possess, that you, that you really like in some other people. And that would be unique to you and only to you that you wanna embody and project when you're on camera. And this could be um, a real quality or this could be a superhero quality. So my real quality is that I tell trans, my superhero power is that I tell transformative stories. That's my superhero power that I have and that I always feel good about. My, my A frame of mind, which I call it my, my A game, I'm bringing my A game and my A frame of mind is stepping into the space where I also know that everything that I Every person that I come in contact with, I want them to feel heard and understood and seen. And that's my other personal superpower that I enjoy having. So this is what I'm asking all of us to think about for ourselves, to have, to think about that superpower that you want to embody before you get in front of the camera. Because when you're recording, you will stumble, you will make mistakes, you will get discouraged, and you need to take a step back and you need to breathe and think about your A-frame of mind. Think about your superpower and then embody that when you talk to the camera and you press record again and you repeat. So are we ready to go into? Yes, yes I put the directions in the chat. Okay, great. So again, your instructions are in these breakout groups is to choose one quality or superpower that you either have and embody already or that you wished that you had and want to project. And then you're gonna go around the circle and share it. 
and you're going to say, I am Tasha Nesbitt, and my superpower is telling transformative stories. Each of you will do it. It feels a little funny to get into that space, and that's the exact point of this exercise, to get out of your head, into your body, and into your superpower. I am Tasha Nesbitt, and my superpower is telling transformative stories. Tell the difference there in my energy. All right, so now let's break out into groups. Everybody ready? Here we go. We'll drop the instructions into the uh, messaging in your group also. Have fun, you guys. Hi guys. Hey Steve. And you're on mute, Janet. It looks like Steve stopped his video, so he might have just walked away. That's kind of what I a, figured too, but I thought I'd four. Um. He's actually assigned to a group. Oh, let's see. We need to move this person. Um, all right. There we go. That's better. Yeah, there's a group of two in room 13. Steve um, has opted not. He, he probably did step away from his. from his computer. Um, there was one room that had only one person, so I moved them to a room of two. Uh, so, yeah, one room. Room six only has two. And room 13 only has two. Maybe you can put them together. Um, that's not a bad idea. Okay, so let's see, room 13. All right, there we go. And let's move Steve in case he comes, we'll move him to what, room. Two. Or you could, uh, yeah, two or three, because you're not in three, so that would, and those are all girls. <laughs> it's an all girl room. Yeah, but poor Erica in room two. And I did uh, go ahead and broadcast into the rooms the instructions too. Good. So they should be able to, as long as you post it in the chat before the breakout, they should be able to access it. Okay. Well, now they have it in two places. So. And, oh, and how long are we doing? Ten minutes on this. Ten one? minutes total. Okay. Yeah. So great, 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 awesome. Nine now. <laughs> or eight. Um, we'll give them. Oh, it's only 920. That's awesome. Does she have a little bit more? Yeah, so they're going to come back and then she's going to just close up and she wants to do Q&A. Okay, great. Great. But I thought the idea was that we were going to finish by 930 these days. Well, and we'll be pretty close without the yeah. Q&A. I know. 
That's why, did you see me hold the sign up? I didn't. I, <laughs> I've been looking at all the texts you've sent me, but. Good, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I had the, um, you know, the instructions all queued up and ready to go and just press enter. And then somebody's like, you know, sends me a private message. What about the LinkedIn group? <laughs> So I, so I texted you and I was like, oh, look, Angela, take care of that one. That's her specialty. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, a couple people, at least three, four people have had to bop out already. So that's all right. Yeah, I think the ending at 930 with at least the main program part of it is yeah. a super good idea. Yeah. You know, Q&A, people can catch that in the recording if they're mm -hmm. super interested. But yeah, pretty good engagement. I saw a lot of people smiling, good. nodding their heads. No good content. That kind of thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, almost too much. I mean, what I'd really love to see next year when we get a video person is somebody actually do some coaching through again, because I, I think that's really powerful. Yeah, because um, uh, that's, well, I was hoping that she would focus more on the storytelling aspect of it. Yeah, I, um, because I think most entrepreneurs do not understand how to create a transformational storyline. Right. And it was funny we, that she's like, oh, you guys, you guys know how to do this. I was like, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> not, not for what we do. I would be better at doing it for you than I would be at doing well, it for me. Okay, let's do that then. That would be the most amazing exchange. Let's do that. Yeah, that's we that live like right next door to each other. Let's you know actually do it physically present too. Well, and two I'm of not... my my clients came to the meeting today because I posted this. I posted this multiple multiple times on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So two of my social media management people are here: um, Taryn and oh, Mary. Great. Those two first time people. That's oh, awesome. great. Yeah. Nice. Well, I have, <sighs> I am going to be leaving Bacon after April. No. I, yes, I, I, I just have to, I just oh, have yeah, so much on my plate. It's Could, can't you stay and, but just not be the person who gets the speakers every time. I, I have to cut down on certain things. I, I just, I have to, I mean, I'm really making some hard decisions because I'm so overextended. Okay. I understand that, but can I um, do a coaching session with you and help you do that? And be so before I accept your resignation, <laughs> I'm working with four coaches. I'm actually okay. taking a break from two. Okay. Got and, it. and this is one of the things that has come out of working with Scott. Scott is absolutely the best business development coach I have ever known. Okay. He is so amazing. And um, we only have four more minutes here. I'm okay. watching the time. I'm so bad at watching time. That's why I, I'm like freaked out that people give me this assignment. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to be moving again the end of June. Yeah, and I, I still that. hate my website and do not have any automation set up at all for the 10 days. I'm just not getting things done. Mm. And so I have to make the tough decisions. I am really not doing any networking until I get all of this done. I can't take more clients. My client base has shifted. I mean, the responsibility of doing posting for five people, six, including myself, and getting all the proposals accepted and then doing all the scheduling, I've got to get this automated so that I can shove it off on Nicole. Because she's ready. She's standing in the wings waiting for me to I understand. So, and the automation for the 10 day challenge. Jesus, I thought I was going to get that done by October. Here right. we are. It's going to be March. Right. I and I still don't have it. So I, I just have to make some tough decisions and just get some shit done. No, I do get it. And it. it's, you know, it's hard. I, I can't be overwhelmed. I've had a migraine headache for the last three weeks. That's not good. And it is just always there hanging around in the background. Sometimes it flares up and I have to do some drastic things to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. 
and I can't live like this. No, 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 you can't. You can't. So I got to cut out the things that are not um, moving my business forward in a dramatic way right now. <laughs> and, and, and this is, it's almost like busy work. You know, it's not moving my business forward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I was going to join Provisors. I'm not going to do that this year. It's mm-hmm. off the table. And it's something I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Just not, it's not going to happen this year. Wow. Okay. Yeah, no, I get it. Anyway, it, yeah, it's, it's a sad thing. I mean, I wanted to be on the bacon board so bad three years ago. See? And it happened. And now I, I've learned a lot. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, I mean, just think about how far so, I've come personally. So talk about it with Scott. But the one thing I would offer you is that there were like, because I've been on the board for, for a long time. And there was at least a year, probably more, when I was on the board, but my um, interaction level was very low. I did not contribute. I, I didn't pull my weight. Um, and, you know, like that, like you, you've come in and you've done more than your fair share. So just the thought of like staying on the board, but not overextending. Just a thought. Let me, it, is, it is a thought, but so you what, know, what, what, what I did guilt was I did factor that I do to myself when I do something like that is probably that's you. Uh, well, that's you. And so that right? could be your challenge because you're not like we would like I, from my perspective, I'd rather have you on the board coming only once a month to the board meetings, to the, you know, this meeting and not coming at the, the midterm one which is what I used to do because I, I had a conflict. Oh, and, and then, I did, Shelly and I had a conversation yesterday. She can never be there on Thursdays, uh-huh. the, the day before. Right. Um, and so I told her, just let us know if you've got a key role that you've got it covered. <laughs> right. Perfect. <laughs> so that we don't, and, and she totally got that. I was like, you know, it's really important <laughs> Right. And be at that meeting. And if you can't just let us know so that we don't have the uncertainty of right. Trying to figure things out. And we're going to, and she totally got that. And we're going to be getting three new people. Hopefully we'll get some people with some energy. That would be great. And I am closing the room. So we've got 60 seconds to go. Anyway, I wanted you to know first. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Cause I, yeah, it's, I'm making lots of decisions that are really hard right now and okay. thus the migraines. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. Plus I'm working with my uh, chiropractor. He's good. Helping. Welcome back, everybody. How was that? Well, the it was a good job. So yeah. fun. So fun. So <laughs> I was... I want to wrap up that exercise a little bit. How, I, how did your energy, just look at how your energy shifted when you, were, when you were embodying your superpower, whether it be a real one or a superhero power. How, how did that feel? Can you write into the chat a little bit about like how you're feeling? Like for me, do you notice a difference when you're, when you're saying it out loud. For me, I am Tasha Nesbitt and I can fly. <laughs> I tell transformative stories. It feels really good. I use this exercise very often, even when I'm in my in my mood, in my head, sometimes if I can catch myself to really just shift out of that, that space. And when I'm at home for long periods of time, (laughs) 
or I'm working for long periods of time. I've been working longer periods of time at my computer during COVID. And I really feel that, again, getting up and getting out of the house, but also just shifting the energy within myself uh, helps a great deal. Yes. So fun. Change the mood. Yes, that changes the mood. Feeling the flow and your superpower. <laughs> I think so. Someone, James, asked, is that really my superpower? Maybe it is something else. I think we all have many superpowers. So, yes, you don't just have one. That's what makes humans amazing. <laughs> and animals amazing too. They have superpowers as well. <laughs> okay. Diane, I, okay, so we'll now we'll just sort of transition here and to get into some question and answer. Um, there was a question of can I demonstrate a quick happy birthday video? Well, I do have an example of that. Uh, but I don't have one to show you at this moment. I don't think it's on my laptop. I worked with an artist, a singer, who was building her online community. I helped her to create a lot of small nugget videos. Can I ask some people to put themselves on mute, please? If you're not on mute. So um, there are many videos that we created to help support her community. And my, again, my personal favorite, <laughs> the birthday video, she was a singer with an incredible voice. She worked with, I don't know if you know, the film director, David Lynch, who uh, did Twin Peaks. She was in the recent Twin Peaks in an acting role, but she's a singer by trade. And her name is Christabel. And she uh, and I created a series of videos to send, to drip out to her audience. And my favorite and the one that got the most attention was the birthday video. It was a personalized video that we filmed actually in this office with a background drop that <clears throat> she's saying a very special happy birthday to you. And uh, every, we programmed it in our active campaign to be sent out as a, in an email uh, once every year on the birthday of the member uh, that was part of the membership. Part, when you buy the membership, it was an actual special feature as the part of the membership. And people always wrote back and were so excited and surprised when they got this very special personal song of a happy birthday to them. So I don't, I can't show it to you now, sorry. But, um, and you don't have to sing. <laughs> but a personal message from you to your client uh, on their birthday is, uh, is, very, is a very special thing that they don't forget. So um, I can start taking other questions, whether they be from the chat, which I haven't been following. So if someone could ask me questions from the chat, if anyone's been following or turn on how, Angela, how should we do that? Or Janet, how should we do this? The question, Q and A. I think probably the easiest way is if somebody would just um, use the raise their hand feature or physically raise your hand. And then when we call on you or Tasha sees you, um, unmute yourself and ask your question. So may let I the have, Q and A may begin. I, may I have support with that? If they raise their hand, could someone support me in that? Sure, Lori, why don't you kick us off? Thank you. Hi, fabulous presentation. Hi. Thanks so much. Um, I got introduced to Video Ask a little bit. Um, what, what is your impression of Video Ask? I'm not familiar with Video Ask. Okay, it's part of Typeform. Uh, Typeform bought them. And basically, you can do a little video and send in an email. It's like a no-brainer thing. So you can say, hey, great conversation. Thanks a lot. Another way to do a birthday thing or do you want to sing a song? But Video Ask is something I started using and then I forgot because I got shy about video and whatever. Well, let me tell you, there are so many solutions popping up here and there. I cannot possibly keep on top of all of them. Um, but, but that's amazing for all of us because more and more um, so video solutions are coming out that are making things very easy, 
very easy to record, to add a logo yourself, to this is why uh, Camtasia is so popular. You can just upload your logo, um, upload, uh, type some text in there. You can um, create your own little demo videos. They have a little, a little mouse feature that you can, you know, put into your video. So it looks like you're clicking. They have a, they have a click sound in their audio library that sounds like if you're clicking. Um, these kinds of solutions are coming out all the time and, and they're making it easier and easier with a, a shorter and shorter uh, learning curve. So um, I, I haven't, I'm not familiar with that one, but again, I do suggest um, Camtasia is a very easy one to pick up. It's not super nuanced and refined and fine tuned, but if you, uh, but it does the trick. It's like a go-kart. You just get in, get it done and you can kick it out. <laughs> and maybe that's the same thing as your, as the program you're talking about does a similar thing. Other questions? Judy, why don't you go ahead? Well, Tasha, many of us, including you, all are wearing glasses and the glare is driving me nuts. And I struggled with where to put my freaking lights so that I'm lit. Mm -hmm. but then I've got glare. Mm -hmm. Any help on that? Okay. So yeah, I can give you, offer two solutions. <laughs> um, one, one solution is in the, in the glasses themselves. There are glasses that you can purchase that are glare free, that they don't reflect light in the same way that our normal glasses do. Um, usually people who are on camera a lot purchase those kinds of glasses and they can be a little bit expensive. Um, the other option is something that we've done in film for years, which is to flag off, is to flag, it's called flagging your light. So if you have a light that's directly here in front of you, um, well, in the film industry, you have a stand kind of like uh, a little, uh, even a camera stand with a piece of black paper that, that you position <laughs> right in the spot that makes the glare it's behind your, behind your computer, um, not in front of your camera, not in front of the light so that it like casts too much of a shadow, but because it depends on how your lights are. That's why I have a couple different lights uh, when I'm shooting, you know, even when if I'm shooting on Zoom, I will have a, a, a big soft box over here and another light here so that I'm getting lights on both directions. Um, it's, it's uh, you play with it. There's no just one easy solution. You have to just play with it. Thank you. And I guess I'm going to have to get my soft boxes back out and up. <laughs> they're they're stacked on a shelf right now. But I'm going to do that again. Thank you. Yeah. If you're recording often, it it's just nice. It's a nice. Although I know that it's not always the best solution if you're recording in a small space or at home. Where well, what is what is that word? I, I couldn't catch it. Soft. Oh, oh, it's it's a light. It's a it's a special light that has a it's a used in photography that has a big white sort of like soft uh, makes the light soft and glary and just sort of like blends across your face rather than shines directly into your onto your face and bounces off your glasses. And the word was soft box. Soft box. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, um, actually, I might as well take the opportunity right now to, or yeah, to, to drop maybe at the very end or right now I can, should I drop the equipment list into? That would be great, chat? thank you, into the chat, perfect. And we'll send it out um, as a follow-up with the okay, recording so of the video whoops. of the meeting. Um, oh, and while, while I have your attention, we, we really, we need to wrap up in let's say five minutes um, we're already a little bit over time. So um, I want to encourage people to use the raise hand feature. It's because I can only see the people on my personal front page. So there, at the bottom right of the screen, there, there's a reactions button. If you click on that, then you can uh, see the raise hand feature. And right now I just see Mary. So I'm gonna start with her and then I'll, I'll let you take that over, Tasha. Okay, hi, Mary. Hi there. Um, I have a problem. I have all the right lighting equipment uh, in terms of like a ring and the big ring that goes on 
the desktop and whatnot. And I can't look at it for more than two or three minutes before I get a migraine. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm, if you could see my room, I have a thousand lamps that I have all over the place, but it's not very um, functional. So I'm just wondering if you have any suggestions for equipment that doesn't absolutely blind I me. I do, I do. So, and yeah. also I see, do you have, I mean, uh, do you also have a lot of natural light coming from the, your, a window that's here next to you? I do today. I have a lot. I have a room darkening blind in the room, but I have not seen daylight in a week because of so many Zoom meetings. So sure. Oh gosh. <laughs> right. Zoom fatigue. Okay. Um, so you know, I'm sensitive as well. I'm a sensitive to sound more than I am to light. But but one of the things that um, you can do is on your ring light, it may have a setting for um, it's a, it's a, uh, orangish right, tint see, rather yeah. than the daylight tint. If you can dial your daylight tint down a little, just not all the way to orange because it'll make mm -hmm. it look like you've got an orange light shining on your face, but you'll want to have it, um, just in the middle that eases will ease your, your, the light, but I'm betting that it's not just your light. It might also be just this just looking at the computer screen. One of the biggest things that the computer screen <laughs> doesn't help us with is this blue computer screen light. We're actually looking at a flat surface, but we're looking through it to whatever we're working on. And that um, can strain your eyes. So okay. more than just your lighting, it's taking regular breaks from the computer screen, which we all need to do. So thank you. I hope that helped. <laughs> Next. Let's go with Bob. Oh, good. Hey, Bob. Uh, uh, bomb bomb. Uh, what's your feeling on that? Do you use that? Well, can you say that one more time? Yeah, I'm a fan of bomb bomb. What do you say that the videos you make them in uh, oh. some of the individuals like your birthday? Yeah, you know, sure, sure. So, um, so I, I remember bomb bomb when they first came out. Actually, it was a few years ago. They're getting gaining uh -huh. in popular now. But um, the real truth of it is, is that they're not doing anything that you can't do already. Um, one of the things, yeah. So you host your video on Vimeo or you host it on YouTube and you, you not, they are saying that they're sending videos through an email, but the, but the real thing is, is they're putting it up on a landing page. So you click it and it actually goes to a landing page. At least that's yeah. how it was when I used them before. It is a good service. It's an easy, it's an easy uh, solution to, to sending in email uh, with videos in them. Okay. Um, but you can do that yourself by creating a web page with the video embedded in it and then putting a photo in your newsletter with that clicks through to your own landing page on your own site or clicks through to YouTube or clicks through to Vimeo or wherever you're hosting your video. So okay. I, 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 I'm really, I try to s save as much money as I can with these tools. Otherwise I'd be spending a million dollars on all this new software that's coming out and pro platforms that I'd be signing up to. And, um, and there's workarounds to bomb bomb. Yeah. I found it a good solution to my lack of expertise. Yes. <laughs> and that is one way that they're serving, they're serving people. So yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Tracy. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a camera geek. So I just wondered what your favorite camera to use is or what you use most often, which is probably- Well, those are two different questions. <laughs> My favorite camera is a Red Dragon. It is a professional high-end cinema, cinematography camera um, and, and all the various lenses with it. I can totally geek out with that. But what I use most often is this for my personal and sometimes with my own videos, I can shoot 4K on my iPhone. Phones these days have incredible cameras. I just never shoot this way. This is a big tip that I should have mentioned a lot earlier. Always shoot horizontal. This way is not the way to do it. We see when you shoot this way, it imitates how we see a frame. This is not how our eyes see like this. So if you wanna have usable footage, 
shoot always like this with your phone. Next. Thank Sheila, you. why don't you go ahead? Okay. I've heard a bunch of um, programs or platforms for me mentioned today for making videos. There's Zoom, there's Loom, there's Canva, there's Camtasia. The only one I've ever used is Zoom. Can you say anything about why I use you know, it, it, pros and cons of any of these? Sure. The two cons of using Zoom is quality. You're not going to get a 4K image, but it's good enough. We're all used to this quality now. The second thing is sometimes Zoom buffers. And when you're talking, there's a like, and all of a sudden it's like, and then, and then it goes again. And that can ruin a recording. Um, but if you have great internet and maybe you don't have that problem, then there's no problem at all with recording with Zoom. Um, if you're doing a professional broadcast quality commercial or video that you want to be seen at a gala or like shown online, and a special streaming event, you want to get higher quality camera. Otherwise, Zoom works. Higher, higher quality camera, but that's different from what how you're recording it. I mean, you could still use Zoom, but with a higher quality camera, you're saying. Um, hmm. I, I'm, I haven't researched how like a higher quality webcam or camera integrates with Zoom. Okay. That and, can you, a question. and can you say anything about any of those other platforms in terms of I have not used Canva yet at all. I don't use Canva. I actually use Photoshop and Illustrator. I am Adobe Suite, um, but Canva is super easy to use. So if it's got video being integrated into it, that might be a great solution. Um, which other? And can can well people have mentioned oh, Camtasia. Camtasia and Loom were the other two that I heard mentioned. So I'm not familiar with Loom, but definitely Camtasia is something that you can easily record. Uh, as you're either you can record a screen, your screen with no sound, you can record a video and sound, or you can record your screen with sound. So you can very easily create videos with Zoom, I mean with Camtasia, and then add your logo and add some music. They even, if you have the higher premium version, you, they even have a library where you can add add titles and all kinds of fancy intros. And although I would refrain from getting too crazy with your videos, you want it to be clean and simple. <laughs> no big cinematic movie opening just for a, just for a, you know. So we have two more questions and then we're gonna close down. Um, Alice, you're, you've been waiting. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would really like to know a little bit more about sound. Um, it may be in the list I haven't seen mm -hmm. yet, but. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed you're wearing earbuds, but I think in a video that's distracting and I wondered about sound. Yes, agreed. And um, yes, true. They are distracting when you're doing a professional or at least a, a video for your clientele. Um, I, my office right now is on a busy street, so I want to be really laser into our meeting. And so earbuds are for me now, but there are a few things that you can do. There are several, and it is inside of the equipment list. I offer a couple of different solutions for sound recording. You can get for um, not a lot of money, but you can get a, 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 a mic that you can clip to your, to your shirt, run your mic underneath your blouse so you don't see the wire and click it to your shirt. That's the secret for that. And you wanna make sure it's not brushing up, up against anything. And there's two ways to do it. Either the, the, the mic is a separate piece from your computer where you're recording separately and then you match the sound with whoever edits your video. If it's you, in, you can do it easily in Camtasia where you bring in your sound and you bring in your video and you match them so that you have this really rich sound from your Zoom from your recording. And then you have your, your camera because recording sound into your computer can be twangy and it can it's sometimes it's just not the best solution and if you're away from your computer the sound is weird and if you're moving back and forth while you're talking then also there's that presents problems so for consistent sound you want to have a mic and there's a mic that can go into the computer and the mic that's separate and both of those options are in the equipment list that i gave you mm -hmm. great 
Uh, and Deborah, you're the last hand raised, and then we're going to close down. Okay. Well, I actually would like to offer a uh, tip, if I might. Sure. Because uh, I kept hearing about eye strain. And for all of any of us who are in front of the Zoom camera a lot, or in front of the computer a lot, eye strain is a big one. So that I have something so simple. If you didn't see it in chat, just cup your forehead and cup the base of your skull. You're connecting energy balance points that will release any tension within the whole area of eyes and even sinus cavities. Mm -hmm. And if you again go to that um, um, PDF I suggested, I have a number of tips that will help eye strain. So make use of it. I, it's not fun to have eye strain because it'll give you a headache. <laughs> Well, that is a wonderful way to round out this Q&A session. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And Perfect. If, and if Thank anyone you. has any further questions, feel free to email me. Um, mm -hmm. I'll put my email in the chat one more time, my, my contact information. Thanks. Thank for you so much, Tasha. Everybody give Tasha a big round of applause. It was really delightful and informative. It's so helpful. And um, yes, video is the way. Thank you for leading it, Tasha. I appreciate it. Um, and we do. So uh, we are going to close down now. And um, what we do now is we keep the breakout rooms open. Um, so we'll put you into breakout rooms. You will be free to move amongst them. Um, I, Angela, are you gonna take care of that? Perfect. I've got it all set. Thank you. So uh, you'll be able to move around uh, just like you would at a normal networking event. Um, and before we kick off into that, I just want to take one or two key takeaways, like what was really good for you in this meeting? Does anybody have one that just springs to mind? Like, wow, I learned this. I will share that I absolutely loved, 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 loved the exercise of standing in your superpower before you begin. Thank you. Yes. All the tools I didn't know about before, and I've been researching this and still found a bunch of new ones. Awesome. One more takeaway. Can I just add in the energy from the first exercise being Zoom fatigue, followed up by the exercises we did in the learning? I can't tell you how much this has energized me, and I so appreciate this group being what it is and bringing in this level of speaker and, and feedback all the way through. Fantastic. Thank you. I mean, yes, I would agree. That's a, Tasha yeah. is an amazing presenter. I love how you have such screen presence. And so you are in the space sharing information in such a beautiful way. Thank you. 